My enclosed Ender 5 build continues with a custom electronics case and a guide to fitting the SKR version 1.3 or MKS Gen L. This Ender 5 is currently undergoing quite a transformation. The end goal is to have a specialist printer capable of doing ABS, nylon and polycarbonate. Previously, I performed a range of mods including this acrylic enclosure. And in the future, I'll be adding a lid as well as giving it a heated build chamber. But to do that, we need to upgrade to a mainboard with more outputs. So in this video, I'm going to provide a guide to fitting the SKR version 1.3 as well as the MKS Gen L. Let's start by looking at the requirements of this application and then having a look at what I've designed. Here is our standard Ender 5 and here are the acrylic door panels we added in the last installment. In a future episode, we'll be adding a lid to contain the heat at the top, but we have a problem. Our standard main board can't output to any extra heaters or read any extra temperatures. Therefore, we need to replace it with something like an SKR version 1.3 or an MKS Gen L. Once we do this, we'll have everything in place that we need to have a heated build chamber. But to throw a spanner in the works, our electronics down the bottom needs to remain cool, especially the stepper motor drivers. And this parameter drives the basis of my design. Therefore, our design criteria is as follows. Our primary purpose is to hold an MKS Gen L or SKR 1.3. We need to provide access to the SD card and USB port. We want to be able to access the mainboard from the top of the printer instead of the underside. We want to isolate mainboard active cooling from the heated chamber. I want to retain the factory switches and plugs, and I want all of the pieces to be printable on an Ender 5. What I'm not concerned with is factory mainboard support, or support for a Raspberry Pi, or keeping it quiet. But I'll upload the step files so people can remix as they see fit. So we start by measuring the Ender 5 frame, as well as the old case and mounting hole locations. I then found a beautifully detailed model of the SKR version 1.3, but I did a couple of cuts to clean it up and make it faster to work with. I also found a model of the Meanwell power supply and quickly modeled up myself the 4010 fan. The base of the case is made up of four sections. Each of them fits within the 220 by 220 Ender 5 build volume, and they're designed to slot and bolt together as you'll see later on. As you can see at the back, the cord still exit in the same corner, the power supply cable still enters in the same corner, and the power switch still resides in its corner too. One main difference is the main board is flipped upside down and it is actually housed on the underside of the lid. We have a double panel that it bolts to and it's hinged in the sides so it can flip up, meaning you have access to it without having to flip the printer upside down like with the original design. We have four more printable pieces to cover the top, but the most interesting thing going on is probably the thermal management. We can see that there's actually room for four 4010 fans, and they're designed to promote cross-flow from one side of the case to the other, this front one going straight onto the stepper motor drivers of our main board. When we look from side on, we can see that my new design actually sits lower than the factory case. And if we look from underneath, we'll see that there's large openings to feed the air to the fan, and then on the left hand side, the other two fans blow out as exhaust with the same large ports. This case actually sits up a little bit higher too, but don't worry, it easily clears the bed when it's at its 300mm lowest position. If you're looking at this thinking that you don't want to print all of these parts, at the end of this segment I'll have an alternative solution for you. Disassembling the old case is quite straightforward, simply undo bolts until everything's free. The only hidden fasteners are the four screws that hold the power supply underneath the sticker. Here's our four base pieces. They're designed to jigsaw together, and my designs on Thingiverse are slightly more refined than what you're seeing here. Each pair is designed to be held together with long M3 by 50 bolts. When you join the left and right pairs, there's actually room to have one of these bolts on each side. Introducing them will make it fairly rigid. You can now join the front to the back pairs with the exact same M3 by 50 bolt. The more we do with this case, the more rigid that it will become. Time to introduce our fans, and I'm using 4010s, and for all of them, the sticker needs to face to the left. There are four slots to insert them, just use cheap 24 volt ones, and remember that on the left hand side as well, all of the stickers must face to the left. 
If you get this wrong, you will completely ruin the thermal management of the case, which relies on a cross flow from the right hand side to the left. At the base of each fan are two holes where you can use M3x20 or similar bolts to thread into the plastic case and retain the fan securely. After they are in place, it seems a good time to inspect the entry and exit ports for each fan. There are some tall sections in the middle to aid with rigidity, but there should still be plenty of room for the required cross flow. If you're worried this isn't going to work, then here's a simple test you can do. If you have a steam exhaust fan in your bathroom, there's a fair chance it draws its air from a tiny crack underneath the door. If I put this paper down, you can see that there's quite a lot of flow coming through to feed the fan. If you manage your inputs and outputs, you can have quite precise control. To wire up the fans conveniently, I made this little loom. On one side, it has four prongs to plug in the four fans, and on the other side, a simple positive and negative for the power supply. The fans plug in, matching up the color to the wires, with the positive and negative spade terminals resting in place, ready to go directly into the power supply outputs. With the fans in place, we can start to insert some of our upper panels. Each of these is going to be retained with short M3x8 or M3x10 bolts. You'll be cutting the thread as you insert them with a screwdriver. We'll now turn our attention to the lid that holds the electronics. It also prints in two pieces, but it's a bit of a tighter fit when you put the two together. Once that's done, another two M3x50 bolts, one from each side, will hold it together and make it fairly rigid. You might like to get a 3.5mm drill bit and drill out the two hinge holes on either side of this top lid. Now we can guide the top lid assembly into place and this time round you're going to want two M3x30mm bolts and we're going to carefully align them by hand and then after you've done this feel free to switch to power tools to drive them home. Your hinged lid should be free to move up and down at will. We'll now start to wire up the power supply and we're going to take note of these wires. It goes yellow for earth, black for neutral, and then red for live down the bottom. We can unplug those, insert the plug at the back, and secure it with the original bolts. You'll notice on the left hand side of the case, there are four mounting holes, which match up to the four mounting holes on the bottom of the power supply. We're going to flip it over and rest it into place, and then flip the whole assembly over, reusing the original bolts to hold it in place. We can now take that earth, neutral, and live, and plug them in in the same order on our entry port. I next chose to wire up my four fans by taking the red terminal and connecting it to the power supply positive and the black terminal and connecting it to the negative. Make sure to double check and get this right or you're going to blow up four fans as soon as you switch on the power. Now unfortunately with the power supply rotated, the wires to the factory switch won't quite reach. To fix this, I made up these simple extension pieces and plugged them in to extend the cables. The original on off switch is simply designed to be pushed in until it clips in place from the front. The spade terminal simply clip onto the back of the switch. The one in the corner will be a little bit tight and you might need to bend it inwards to clear the 3D printed part. It would be extremely dangerous to have these connections come loose and for this reason I've chosen to insulate mine with black electrical tape. As an alternative to extend the short wires you might choose to cut, solder and then heat shrink to achieve the same thing. Take the pair of wires that come out of the power supply to go into the main board and feed them through into the right hand side and then place your left hand lid pieces to close up the power supply. These lid pieces, like the ones we've already done, are held in place with short M3 bolts. Once again, they'll cut their own thread as we insert them. Now it's time to complete our wiring by flipping up the lid and installing the main board. To do this, I chose to flip the printer on its back and then line up the electronics case underneath. You can then flip it up into place and insert the mounting bolts. Once again, the original bolts are retained and they will cut their own thread as you insert them. There's two bolts to insert on the front as well as two on each side. You will need to undo the two bolts from the right hand front cover as well as one bolt for the hinging lid to feed through the LCD ribbon cable. I'd also recommend taking the wires for the X stepper motor and feeding them underneath the lid to make sure they reach the main board. Unfortunately, the ribbon cable for the factory LCD is about 10 cm short, so keep this in mind if you're not installing an MKS TFT. Both of these mainboard upgrades have the same mounting footprint, so reuse the factory M3 bolts to hold it onto the underside of the lid. I've made this diagram to help you when you unplug the wiring from the factory mainboard. If you're wiring up an MKS Gen L, the wiring is almost exactly the same as an Ender 3. 
but because the end of five homes in the different direction, you need to plug X and Y end stops into X and Y max instead of X and Y min. For the SKR, it's exactly the same change. The X and Y end stops plug into max as well. These diagrams are linked in the description and I'd recommend making a hard copy to keep somewhere near your printer. The wiring is plug and play apart from the end stops. Mark the left hand lug as seen here and then use a knife to carefully slice it off. They're now ready to go. Plug them in as per the previous diagram, they'll now go straight in. With everything in place, you should now be able to close the case and double check that everything lines up. Around now was the time that I decided that a small securing bolt was needed and you'll find this in the STL of the final version released on Thingiverse. Now I did promise an easy alternative. And if you look inside the factory case, there's some mounting bosses and I've designed this adapter plate to take either of these main boards. This will be compromised however, as you won't have access to the USB port or the SD card. But if you're putting in a touch screen that you'll print from, this might be an easy option for you to use. However you choose to add either of these boards, the next step is firmware. And fortunately, in Mullen 2.0, there's a base configuration for Ender 5. So the changes that we need are quite minimal. So this is the Marlin GitHub page. And most of the time you're used to using branch 1.1.9, which is the current. But instead we need to press this button and instead select bug fix 2.0. When the page reloads, we can come to clone or download and download a zip. Unpack the zip and then complete this next step. It's the same for either of these main boards. We're gonna to come to config, examples, creality, end of five, and then copy the four files. We'll now come back to the base folder, into Marlin, and then paste these files, overriding what's already there. I previously made an Ender 3 guide for the MKS Gen L, and then you can do exactly the same steps for your Ender 5. Here's a quick recap. We're going to define our motherboard as board MKS Gen L, and we're gonna set in configuration advanced the E0 auto fan pin as seven. You can also refer to my SKR 1.3 guide, but here's a recap as well. In platformio.ini, we need to set the environment to LP1768. We need to set serial port to minus one and then uncomment and set serial port two to zero. Our board needs to be set to board big tree SKR V13. And in configuration advanced, we need to set EO auto fan pin to P2 underscore zero four. Because this is Keith B has set up the configuration correctly, these are the only changes we need to get the printer working perfectly. From this point onwards, you can use any of my previous guides to set up whatever stepper motor drivers or things like a BL touch if that's what you have in your setup. For my printer, I paired the SKR up with 2130s and a BL touch. Now that we're running a superior mainboard, it enables to do other upgrades. After some time in prints to verify that the standard LCD worked, I then changed to an MKS TFT touchscreen, which is done exactly the same way as my previous guide for the Ender 3. When the next installment for my Ender 5 comes out, I should have a lid and hopefully have a working heated build chamber. After that, I'll do a video where I test how it performs on a range of cool different filaments. If you've got any comments on what you think I should try, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.